This is a story so predatory, it's cast a chorus of fattened folks. A barbaric fable from a banquet table, but alas, this is no hoax. It's an all-you-can-eat, all kinds of meat from every kind of beast. But not just any restaurant, and no normal kind of feast. The special guests at this colossal feed were a ravenous, frightful, merciless breed, known for their unstoppable, insatiable greed. Invited from places all over the world, their rapacious habits would soon be unfurled. Incredibly fat aristocrats and bulging barons with animal hats, mammoth moguls, hefty nobles, and a ton of tubby tycoons, magnates, monarchs, dukes, and counts that resembled big balloons. One of them even boasted he'd eaten 20 cooked baboons. Swollen sultans from distant regions, elephantine warlords from far foreign legions, porcine queens with obese kings, and the plump little children who ate all sorts of things. Chiefs, commanders, khans, and kaisers, admirals, emperors of monstrous sizes gathered on this one dark night to boast of their fanciful carnivorous plight and to be fed an unrivaled meat-eater's delight. The menu was long and divided for distinction into dark, beastly chapters of creatures doomed for extinction. It was not a cataclysmic blast that spelled the end for the dinosaur. The entire lot chopped up and eaten by their forefathers years before. For a diplodocus tail will never fail to feed an army of hungry Huns, and a stegosaurus sandwich will feed a fasting flock of nuns. Out came an entree of Mongolian ants that carried a message and did a weird dance. They ordered 6,000 eggs of unborn birds and slurped them away with no last words. They scooped out brains and cut up a snake, then followed that up with hippopotamus steak. The chefs, a pack of culinary barbarians who bring tears to the eyes of all good veterinarians. Most of them wanted by the cuisine police, but they bribed them with wolves' feet cooked up in hot grease. They personally hunt down and kill their ingredients. To the restaurant they have only loyal obedience. They journey far and travel wide to poach the chef special, drawn, quartered, then fried. Their kitchen like a slaughterhouse, an abattoir for porterhouse. What goes in alive comes out dead. And what goes in deceased comes out deader. But if it's served up still breathing, some say it tastes better. Now in this aerial eatery, something was not upon the menu. Not dessert, nor supper, or pianist in tux, but a little known phenomenon dubbed carnivore reflux. At 11.45, a wave of grumbling swept the room. They could hear a distant tremor. Did a frightening earthquake loom? But the sound grew louder as their stomachs started to churn. Was indigestion the foe in question, or was heartburn the concern? Out from their mouths came a torrent of vomit, spraying at the speed of a heaving Halley's Comet. Each creature devoured through the ears came spewing out all galloping, flapping, and swimming about in their original forms, all put back together, hot meals in rewind, out of the ether, geezers of puke with a volume and thickness of four fleets of Vikings with chronic seasickness, out of their stomachs, up through their esophaguses, from internal organs, things rose from their sarcophaguses. I don't remember eating that said a man who threw up an ape that seemed surprisingly tame. But he should have known that Gorilla Worst was not just a clever name. Their yakking echoed with the sounds of yaks, growls and barks and hoots of owls, chirping, squeaking and some meows, and whatever sound a turtle makes. The retching, 
people could do nothing but sit like the obese spewing man in that Monty Python skit. The years of meals had come back to haunt them. Phantoms of dinners past would suddenly taunt them. There they were, all suddenly freed, reincarnated like a Buddhist stampede. The gods of gastronomy had struck fear among the mortals, their mouths becoming ghastly, gaping creatures, squirting portals. But the mass evacuation finished. Their exorcism had abruptly diminished. The guests had managed to shed all their pounds and looked remarkably thinner, all because of an epic purge that followed their extravagant dinner. Were the savage chefs to blame, or mutant food poisoning, the doctors would claim? Did the maitre d' lace their four courses, or was this a result of much higher forces? The sky had fallen on their voracious appetite. They swore never to eat meat again to avoid such a volcanic night. Oh, but this isn't just a warning for only you meat-eating kind, as herbivore bowel can creep up from behind. For far away in a country that starts with a Z, near the Ottoman Empire, and a sea that is red, a vegan woman passed a fruit orchard, it said, and another leaf-eating man some million miles away pooped out a pumpkin patch at 11.46, they say. <laughs>